Welcome to Big Daddy Storytime. We're reading The Magic School Bus Lost in the Solar System. It was trip day again in Miss Frizzle's class. Everyone was excited. We were going to the planetarium to see a sky show about the solar system. Arnold's cousin Janet was visiting our class for the day. I know all of you will be nice to our guest, said the Frizz. We tried to be nice to Janet. We, we really did. We, we got on the school bus. We told her that Miss Frizzle is the weirdest teacher in school. But Janet wasn't interested. She wanted to tell us about herself. As usual, it took a, it took a little while to get to get the old bus started, but finally we were on our way. As we were dr driving, Miss Frizzle told us all about how the Earth spins like a top as it moves in the orbit, in its orbit. It was just a short drive to the planetarium, but Miss Frizzle talked fast. When we got to the planetarium, it was clo it was closed for repairs. Class, this means we'll have to return to school, said the Frizz. We were so disappointed. On the, on the way back, as, as we were waiting at a red light, something amazing happened. The bus started tilting back, and we heard the roar of rockets. Oh, dear, said Miss Frizzle. We seem to be blasting off. When the roar of the rocket stopped, we looked around. Everything had changed. The bus had turned into a spaceship. We were all dressed in spacesuits, and we were lighter than feathers. We floated above our seats. Far beyond in the black sky, we saw the planet Earth getting smaller and smaller. We were traveling in space. We had become astronauts. The Frizz said our first stop would be the moon. We got off the bus and looked around. There was no air, no water, no sign of life. All we saw were dust and rock and lots and lots of craters. Miss Frizzle said the craters were formed billions of years ago when the moon was hit by meteorites. Meteorites are falling chunks of rock and metal. It was fun on the moon. We wanted to play, but Miss Frizzle said it was time to go. So we got back on the bus. We'll start with the sun, the center of our solar system, said the Frizz, and we blasted off. We zoomed around the sun, the biggest, brightest, and hottest object in the solar system. Jets of super hot gases shot out at us from the surface. Thank goodness Miss Frizzle didn't get too close. She steered around to the other side and pulled away. We'll be seeing all the planets in order, class, explained Frizz. Mercury is the first planet, the closest to the sun. Mercury was a dead, sun-baked planet. This planet is a, is a lot like our moon. There is no water and hardly any air, said the Frizz. Notice the craters on its surface as we pass by? Before long, we felt ourselves being pulled in by the gravity of Venus, the second planet from the sun. Venus was completely covered by a thick layer of yellowish clouds. We will now explore the surface of Venus, said Miss Frizzle. Below the clouds, Venus was a dry, was dry as a desert. The ground was covered with rocks, and it was hot. It was about 400 degrees centigrade. That's much hotter than an oven baking cookies. The air was so heavy, we could feel it pressing down on us. Miss Frizzle said there might be volcanoes around, too. We said, let's get out here. Our next stop is Mars, the red planet, fourth from the sun. 
announced the Frizz. On our way, we will be passing through the orbit of Earth, the third planet. The bus lifted off with a roar. As we came close to Mars, we passed its two moons, which are called Phoebes and Deimos. Compar compared to our moon, they were very tiny. They weren't even round. Looking, looking down, we saw a huge canyon. Miss Frizzle said it was as long as the United States. There was a volcano three times taller than the tallest volcano on Earth. And all around, there were channels that looked like dried up riverbeds. We landed and started, look, started walking around. Suddenly, a huge dust storm blew up. Miss Frizzle said dust storms on Mars can last for months. They may cover the whole planet. We scrambled back on the bus and headed out. Mars is the last of what we call the inner planets. Miss Frizzle shouted above the roar of the rockets. We will now be going through the asteroid belt to the outer planets. Thousands of asteroids were spinning all around us. All at once we heard the tinkling of broken glass. One of our taillights had been hit by an asteroid. Miss Frizzle put the bus on autopilot and went out to take a look. She kept on talking about asteroids over the bus radio. Suddenly there was a snap. Miss Frizzle's tether line had broken. Without warning, the rockets rockets fired up and the bus zoomed away. The autopilot was malfunctioning. On the radio, Miss Frizzle's voice grew fainter and fainter. Then she was gone. We were on our own. We were lost in the solar system. Most of us were too scared to move, but Janet started searching the bus. In the glove compartment, she found Miss Frizzle's lesson book lesson book. As she began reading from it, a huge planet came into view. Class, this is Jupiter, Janet said. It's the first of the outer planets and the largest planet in the solar system. We thought the school bus was going to land, but there was no solid ground to land on. Jupiter is a gas giant, a planet made almost entirely of gas. As we left Jupiter, we wandered and worried. What would ever, how would we ever get home? The next sight made us forget our troubles. It was Saturn, a gas planet like Jupiter. It had swirling clouds and lots of moons. But the most incredible thing about Saturn was its rings. It was the most beautiful planet in the solar system. Next was Uranus, a blue-green gas planet with faint gray rings and moons. Some scientists think they might be made of chunks of graphite and the material used in pen the material that are used in pencils on Earth. The bus was getting faster or going faster and faster and we couldn't control the autopilot. We swept past stormy Neptune, another blue-green planet, eighth from the sun. All we could think about was finding Miss Frizzle. We were going too fast. We almost missed seeing the ninth planet, tiny Pluto, and its moon, Claron. We were so far away from the sun that it didn't look big. It didn't look big anymore. It just looked like a very bright star. We were leaving the solar system. Janet flap flipped rapidly through Miss Frizzle's book. Suddenly, she found something new. The instructions for the autopilot. We punched in asteroid belt on the control panel. Slowly, the bus turned around. It was working. We were going back. When we reached the asteroid belt, there was Miss Frizzle. When Frizz, when Frizzle back on the wheel, with Frizzle back on the wheel, the bus headed straight for Earth. We re-entered the atmosphere, landed with a thump, and looked around. We were in the school par parking lot again. The rockets were gone. The spacesuits were gone. 
The bus was a wreck. Everything was back to normal. In the classroom, we made a, a terrific chart of the planets and a mobile a mo of the a mobile of the solar system. At last, it was time to go home. It had been a typical day in Miss Frizzle's class. Now we had only one problem. Would any would anyone ever believe us when we told about our trip? We went to outer space today. Of course you did. My favorite planet was Jupiter. No, maybe Mars. Of course, Saturn was gorgeous too. Mom, make him stop. And there were, and and there was Miss Frizzle floating among the asteroids. What an imagination! We could have been lost in space forever. Eat your salad, honey. What have we learned today, my friends? We have learned that. That the, from the magic school bus that our solar system is out of this world amazing be sure to uh, also be sure to like favorite and subscribe stay tuned for more big daddy story time god bless